My name is Sapkajar Govinda, I'm the lead organizer for Silicon Beach. A lot of you are Silicon Beaches, I see a lot of familiar faces, but there are a few of you who come from uh, Eventbrite, so I'll, I'll uh, uh, give an introduction about Silicon Beach. But first of all, I need to thank the traditional owners, which are the traditional owners of the land on which we stand, the voluntary people of the Kuri Nation, and we pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. We also need to thank NYOD, as these posters say, NYOD is the original startup, and they uh, take great pride in supporting the emerging startups of Australia. So, you know, given this event space free of charge, and you know, also they sponsor us. So, uh, the crew here, basically, we didn't want to say a few words to you even because they they're not selling their product or anything. They're just supporting in the true uh, startup tradition of Silicon Valley and all the other uh, emerging startups that are paying it forward. So Silicon Beach, for those of you who came through Eventbrite, you uh, may not know us. This is the first event you are attending. Thank you so much for coming on a cold winter's morning. We were not expecting a big crowd. We had about 100 RSVPs across Eventbrite and Meetup. But this morning we were a lot of people changing it to no because they must have woken up in the morning and said no. I'm not doing this. <laughs> so, they saw my face on something. Yeah. Yeah, happening. So anyway, just for those we are also videoing this. This goes on YouTube later on on Silicon Beach TV YouTube channel. Uh, so we can share it with the rest of the Silicon Beaches. There are Silicon Beaches around the country in Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth. Launceston, Geelong, uh, and Ballarat. We're opening some more around the country. Um, Silicon Beach started about 10 years ago, I think, in Sydney as a group that just brought people out from their computer screens onto a park to have a few drinks. It was only called Silicon Beach Drinks those days, but from there we have evolved into Australia's largest startup community if you add all the Silicon Beaches around the country. In Melbourne, we are the largest Silicon Beach with nearly 11,500. And on our way to become the largest single startup community in Australia. So, uh, you are now part of that. If you are not, member of the, not a member of the MENA, please join. You know, the... Uh, just Google Level Silicon Beach, you'll find out. So, without further ado, I'm going to uh, hand over the mic to the Australian landing pad the crew that are here. At least, who's flown all the way from Sydney and who has flown <laughs> all the way from San Francisco. <laughs> So first of all, I'll hand over to Kathleen, who's the landing pad manager for Australia, is it? Uh, the, globally. Yeah, globally, like the program manager, yeah. Uh, hi, thank you all for coming out on a cold uh, Melbourne morning. It's great to see you all here. So yeah, uh, we lovely to uh, have Gabe here with us as well, who is the uh, director of market entry, uh, looks after the San Francisco landing pad. Uh, which is one of our five locations. So uh, the Ladyhead program is really exciting to me because it's a government initiative to better support startups. So we have a charge for the program uh, and we look to support startups uh, looking to expand beyond Australia. So we have such amazing talent here and it's actually uh, exciting for us to support Australian companies who are looking to expand, uh, whether that be into the Americas uh, or Europe, uh, UAE, uh, wider Zorina area of Asia. So we have five locations, uh, Berlin, Tel Aviv, Singapore, Shanghai, and San Francisco. Uh, and we're very excited to be here today. So I will head over to Gabe. Thank you. Sure. Well, that was my entire presentation already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I thought this was going to be like a buffet circle, so this is, we're just going to make this chill, I think. Yeah, we'll keep it quite open. People can ask questions. Yeah. I have a few questions that people sent in, but yeah, we will. It's going to be like Q&A. <laughs> um, well, thank you for hosting Silicon Beach. I really appreciate it, even if it is the middle of the night for me or after dawn. Um, and, and, and YLB, this facility is amazing. And, 
people come to San Francisco and expect these kind of glossy Wizard of Oz spaces and where you're really in windowless conference rooms. So this is uh, really good. Um, because I don't want to do all the talking or want to understand who's caffeinated enough to wake up this early in the winter. Everybody knows that you call it that here. Um, but maybe we can get like kind of a show of hands and um, what kind of profile of people are, are here. So, you know, I don't, not to go around everyone in the room, but raise your hand maybe if you're a startup founder or someone on a team looking to, to scale. Great. And of those people, keeping your hands up, um, or keep your hands up, I guess, if you're looking at the US or the Americas. Um, cool. And then, uh, how about Europe? And uh, Asian in general. Um, and Middle East is its own. We can talk about how the LV fits in a little bit, or Kathleen can. Um, but um, uh, for the last half, is obviously part of the Americas, and people looking at that. Uh, Antarctica. <laughs> um, Mars? Mars, of course. Of course, we need to get out of this planet a little bit, I think. Uh, I think a lot of us, well, at least myself, is in digital services, which could be. Exactly. Because it would love to be beyond. Exactly, for sure. And that's you know, so much of the, what we talk about with our program. And if we're savvy enough to know with uh, you know, working with tech and, and fast scaling tech, we're not locking people in a conference room in San Francisco. We obviously, it's about entering global markets. Um, so we found the startups. What about service providers? Anyone here in terms of like legal accountants, people that are going to tell me I'm breaking the law? You know? Great. Uh, <laughs> just, you know, slowly embarrassed to do it. Uh, government, I guess we're just up here. Anyone else? Um, what other category? Investors? Fantastic. Um, you're going to be rated on the way out, I'm sure. Um, what, other, what other categories of people am I missing, just so I know who I'm talking to? Coaches. Say it again? Coaches and trainers. Oh, great. Yep. Somebody does everything. <laughs> Transform. Developers. And, and for those developers, are you part of a specific startup? Or are you just kind of doing a bunch of different things? That, yeah. Anyway, it, I guess the message is going to be transferable in whether you're in a place right now where you're in the driving seat uh, around a global expansion, or if you're looking at that in the future. Our general mission here is through this model, through Austrade more generally, is just to shorten the learning curve for that eventual expansion overseas. So it's generally kind of what we're here to do. I'm talking about the landing pad mo uh, model. Um, just a brief background. Um, the program was created at the end of, funded at the end of 2015 uh, out of the National Innovation and Science Agenda. Um, and, it, and given to Austrade as the caretaker or administrator of the program. The general, you know, Austrade has 83 offices around the world, and um, our mission is to contribute to Australia's economic prosperity. Um, really through that two-way trade and investment uh, is the priority for helping Australian companies access global markets and helping global companies, for example, in the Americas, land and expand into Australia and hire and Australians. The landing pad was an initiative uh, project given to Austrade um, from the ministerial heavens, and we're very happy it was, um, with the vision of Austrade, like other governments, needs to play in that startup scale up space. And rather than kind of delivering traditional, complex, more, I, I guess, um, you know, large export services on an ad hoc project basis which we still do on a fee recovery basis. Um, the idea is let's create a cohort-based model around the world where we can provide somewhat earlier stage companies, tech companies that are still moving fast, and an investment for the future economy. Let's provide them, at no cost, um, cohort-based market entry programs. And let's pick locations around the world that can be really flagship um, uh, offerings for that, while well, well, understanding that companies are born global, and that these programs will be gateways into the broader region. Um, so that was it. At the end of 2015, we cut the ribbon in San Francisco in March or, let's say, April 2016. Um, 
And as always happens, there wasn't a ton behind the ribbon at the time, but we, we built rapidly and have learned from our company. So the general model in all landing paths, and, and still for sure in San Francisco, although we'll talk about some of the evolutions and ways we're trying to be flexible, is a 90-day um, tailored residency at, at no cost uh, to participate um, in, in the market. So companies are receiving, you have the slide. Um, companies are receiving a, a fully subsidized office space, or, or really a desk, and, and right now in San Francisco, it's in a WeWork, we have different campuses in different cities. Um, so they're receiving that operational base at no cost. They're receiving Austrade tailored services at no cost. So that's me, uh, landing pad manager is kind of a resource concierge, but uh, as I'll say, it's an industry agnostic program, and our entire Austrade network um, is at the disposal of the companies that go through this program. So again, we have 83 offices uh, for the purposes of the SF program. We have six offices in the US, two in Canada, six or seven in LATAM, and we are one America's team. So you know, over those 90 days, a really bespoke, tailored experience where the companies in the program are receiving um, our Rolodex, I mean our currency are our connections. So they're receiving access to intros to service providers, to uh, enterprise customers usually, to investors, to strategic partners, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, and, and that's the meat of the program, is that bespoke, one-off, uh, you know, or one-on-one -on -one tailored service introductions. Um, that being said, it's delivered in a cohort-based model, because we can solve for quite a few questions um, simultaneously across the industry. So um, the actual field of the program are about you know, front-loaded weekly, if not more active, more frequent um, workshops. So nothing, you know, n not rocket science, but really helpful for a company that's coming into the market. These are things like legal essentials, talking about international taxation, flip-ups, a lot of boot camps and, and tailored work about getting your pitch deck in, in place. We do selling to enterprises, BC 101, banking, culture, everything. Um, they're all optional, but we stayed because they're relevant for the full cohort. Um, and, and a heavy pre-departure program as well. Um, so in terms of like key programmatic elements, making sure that before they arrive in market for this 90-day program, we're not just getting their intelligence on the market, we're not just, uh, to, the, to the companies, we're not just doing pitch deck preparation, but we're saying very, very tangibly, who do you want to speak to over these 90 days? What is your hit list, both from categories of, of, of hits and also very specific uh, customers, VCs that we can cross-reference against our Rolodex? And let's get this momentum moving before we plan. Um, what I'll just emphasize for the program and one key point that I think um, we just need to really message so the companies come, especially in San Francisco, and understand what they're receiving, is we're not an accelerator program. Um, this is not a hand-holding 90-day experience. I really think of it as more a platform for companies that are mature enough and are ready in the strategic plan that says that the US is where they need to be right now in this case. We're gonna shorten the learning curve. So again, taxpayer-funded resource, we're giving you a space to sit, we're giving you friendly peers, and we're giving you our Rolodex. Um, but we're not, it's not a trade mission, it's not a boot camp, we're not packing your lunch and putting you to sleep at night with, with lullabies. Um, and, and, and really, it's, it's kind of what companies get out of it is what companies put in, in terms of harassing me. Um, so uh, the Slack channel, uh, just you know, seeing me every day at WeWork or at the consulate across the street and just saying, do you have these connections? Does Austria have these connections? Uh, this can all straight put on this event, et cetera, and we, we build the program as we go to fit that purpose. Um, so that's kind of a, that's broad for us. And, and I will say Kathleen's a good contact um, about talking, some of the, talking about some of the nuances of the other programs. Um, there's that common ethos, that common theme of taxpayer funded market entry services, but not all markets are made, made alike. So Tel Aviv often is a market where you're getting a, a concentrated inspiration and, and, and connections in a briefer period of time. Um, and each, each market has its own nuances. Um, 
some point I was just going to make, but oh yeah, of course, and, and industries and, and, and sectorial uh, priorities in each market. I mean, San Francisco in the US and program-wide, we're really looking at fast, scalable tech companies and tech products. So I know people are coming from you know, different, different agency perspectives, have different consulting services. In terms of us moving the needle in a, in a highly competitive market, we're really looking at, at what we say is scalable tech solutions. Um, I can talk to anyone individually about what that means and how we can provide support potentially through other channels outside of the landing cap mechanism for, for some of those consultants and service providers, et cetera. Um, yeah, so let's move on. Here we go. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on WeWork. Um, uh, it, it is where we host the program in, in San Francisco. Um, are people here familiar with WeWork, I'm guessing? Um, so it's... You know, they have free beer. I know, yeah. I, I, I went to the Pier Mountain one and it was complete carnival environment over there. but. No knock on WeWork, but I'll be very realistic about them. I mean, it's kind of a McDonald's for a co-working space, and it's a happy meal uh, for us. And the reason we choose to base the program over there, and the reason our companies consistently say that um, it works so well for them, is it's extremely flexible. We're located in San Francisco, in the center of the financial district downtown. And our companies, and, and, and we're, we're continuing to find ways to expand this, have access to WeWork campuses around the world. Um, and specifically for our program around the Americas, where, we're, where we, we are expected that their expansion is focused. Um, we work to network in, in our mentality that this program cannot be based in a single conference room in a single city, really accommodates that kind of cross-market channel. So companies are in LA, they're in New York, they're in Denver, they're in Bogota, and they have a, a space to sit in a community there. And, and as you know, there's such a spectrum of people within WeWork. Um, you know, well, a lot of their sessions might be whiskey tastings and yoga, yoga things. Um, they have a really good diverse population of VCs, service providers, corporate innovation labs, etc. So I think that's just the point I would make on WeWork. But um, just reiterating that it, it's kind of a hub and spoke model for this program. Austrade is the core delivery service. Um, everyone and their brother has an incubator space, an accelerator, a corporate innovation lab. Our goal for this program, especially for industry agnostic, is to be a conduit to the program that makes most sense. So um, if you're doing FinTech, we have great relationships with different FinTech labs with obviously enterprise customers, um, banks, et cetera. Rather than putting you, putting the program in a specific FinTech innovation lab like Accenture's in New York, we will be a channel to that. Same with health tech or ag tech, um, uh, VR enabling technologies, et cetera. So, we are a channel, we have partnerships with those spaces. We often have either fast track referral services or ways to kind of shorten the, the path into those programs. We work as a comfortable campus service provider in that way. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I don't practice what I preach by having a clear, coherent deck, perhaps, so that's why I'll be here wildly off of it where, where and, and kind of have stream of conscious but one thing that I want to hit is um, how I have now had less coffee meetings saying the exact same thing, and, and maybe I'm a, a bit saner and less over-caffeinated in terms of our use of digital resources. So um, such a prerequisite to succeeding in these markets is having that baseline intelligence um, and things that can be things that have been answered for that can be delivered in math. So it's not rocket science, but I've been really impressed by the feedback and the efficacy of some of the things we've created. So, uh, sorry, even the, I need to update this presentation, but the website you guys should check out is bit.ly slash landing pads, bit.ly slash landing pads. That's our entire program website. Bit.ly slash landing pad resources is a pretty concentrated dump of some of these. Um, I have a bunch more that can, I, I can follow up with email. Uh, but, but what I really focus on is, sorry again, bit.ly slash landing pad resources. On that page, we have a podcast series, legal fact sheets, market entry guides, a um, ton of other great stuff and, and industry cluster reports. The podcast series is one I'll flag in particular. We created nine episodes um, last year with the Aussie Founders Network, helping us produce, produce that in the US. These are nine, this is a, podcasts can be touchy-feely, fluffy, inspirational. 
the goal of this was to make it really a tactical guide, tactical audio guide to coming in. So nine tech episodes, should you go, how do you set up, visas, VC, hiring, marketing, um, all, all of that jazz. Um, and each one is Aussies and service providers uh, speaking to the lessons they've learned for the next generation. So I'm talking tactical, boring info, like specific visa classes, how do you get a social security number, things about credit reports, um, navigating the Byzantine and confusing world of VC. So, you know, people want to do a second season and, and, and we're definitely thinking about it, but rather than and just kind of touching interviews, these are real tactical guides, very much focused on the USA in this case. And uh, Kathleen can talk as well, I know there's a Shanghai series, there's other podcasts that take different slants, but, but we have that. Um, it nests really well with the Land in the Bay Guide, which goes through similar topics in the PDF. It's uh, massively hyperlinked. Um, legal fact sheets that hit all these topics and hyperlink to, to more information. So before you leave, as you're considering, uh, take a look at these resources, because it really it really helps kickstart that expansion um, and, and, and has been huge for us. So. Yeah, if you can send me email me those links, I'll share it with everybody now. Absolutely, it's just such a, and, and there's so many more as well. I think, when I was, I was cynical when I started creating these resources with Austria, thinking so much already exists and so much does in terms of entering the market. Um, like Y Combinator's startup school, open source curriculum is really great, million guides, million digests. I think what was really missing though was specific Australian to US knowledge. Um, and amazing uh, how, how little there can be information specifically on how to set up a bank account, uh, how to do credit scores, how to do uh, visas for this situation. So I think we've really filled a market gap with these and, and um, please share them around and, and we have a ton more as well. So let's see what's next. I do have to do a shout out to the Aussie Founders Network. There's a lot of uh, expats uh, Aussies just keep coming up through the woodwork in, in San Francisco. I don't understand how there are so many and around the U.S. in general. AFN is one uh, one group uh, of many fantastic uh, expat organizations. They're based in the Bay Area, but they're really syndicated and expanding and become a good one-stop shop. I'd say the way you think about them working in concert with the landing pad is they have thousands of members. I didn't put their website on there, unfortunately. AussieFounders.org. A-U-S-S-I-E founders.org. Free membership to sign up. They're always expanding what they do in terms of digital resources, but also just kind of what I was gonna say in terms of how we work together. They have such a handle on the Aussie expat community that they're the best channel to talking to more seasoned founders. And Aussie is in every stage of business since they're, you know, they're in leadership in corporates, they're in VC, um, they're everywhere. So AFN's really good with that. Uh, where we hope to, to augment that and supplement that with our you know, years and years of having a dedicated U.S. base in these different markets is obviously connecting you to the U.S. business leads uh, and, and U.S. based um, uh, you know, strategic leads for your company. So uh, when they're really going to give you a peer network that's going to kickstart the, the, the expansion, we're hoping to connect you with those local networks that will be specific for your business um, in that way. Uh, and then just we'll say, uh, it, we're always helping them expand and looking at ways to do it. The goal is that whenever someone comes through the U.S., you can have a virtual community and you can hopefully also find like a floating Tim Tams or a bar where Aussies are getting drunk, maybe, which I'm not going to supposed to say that probably. But um, they do a bunch of events. They do at least, I want to say monthly fireside chats with super all-star um, Aussies in, in, in every stage of, of business. Um, they'll do more curated lunches, they'll do mentor events. Um, they do really cool things. So go to their go to their website, sign up for a membership, uh, and they're really increasing their presence as well. In Australia, these, these are created by, by the way, um, successful Australian founders, but what they want to do uh, in addition to what we're doing is have that pre-departure preparing you to go global uh, network over here. And they recently did some workshops with us in PwC as well. Talk about a few select successes. Um, and it's been, and we can fill many more slides. And again, apologies for an older deck, but you know what we've seen for companies in the program is that successes have spanned every category you could kind of imagine. And, and these are the kind of outcomes we want to see and track. 
So these would be export sales, signing new customers in the US, raising investment, um, being able to set up on the back of our program a lasting US office, hiring more Australians from the revenue uh, in the US, or hiring US people to continue to drive the show, uh, entrance to partnership program. So just a few, I mean, Rosterfy has always been uh, one of our kind of heroes from um, Richmond, or the, I mean, from, from the backyard here. Um, so anyway, they, uh, are people here familiar with them? Uh, they, I mean, they're an incredible company, um, uh, platform that manages volunteers for large-scale sporting and entertainment events. They had huge success with large-scale events in Australia, but they were looking for a facilitated entry point to the U.S. Um, and with the support of the landing pad, and I'll say both the base, but also our networks, they were able to uh, actually sign the Super Bowl uh, and do now four Super Bowls in Houston, Minneapolis, Miami, another um, Tough Mudder competitions, a bunch of spin-out projects with the cities that host each, each Super Bowl. Um, they're about to do the, the uh, World Expo in Dubai and probably have a million volunteerships managed through that. Just really great export sale example, um, to use a sale word, but just, just selling and signing a uh, massive win in that way. Um, Indie Labs and another company, well actually it's several now, uh, another one would be Snapper, um, and, and now a company called uh, um, Insight. So what? Oh yeah, and uh, Inside Sherpa as well. Um, have raised capital and X, sorry, many more have raised capital through the program with our support and on their own uh, on their own backs. But those three that I just mentioned, Indy Snapper and Inside Sherpa, are all landing pad companies that ended up in Y Combinator, either before, concurrent to, or after our program, um, which was access to another great network um, and, and and always leads to capital. A point I make on those, and, and this just reiterates my my kind of um, think of it as a platform, not an accelerator that we're running, is nothing about being in our program precludes you from doing another program that makes sense. Um, what we just ask is that you'll be using our resources. So that, the, for example, the desk space is something that makes sense to you for the majority of that time. You'll be using and harassing me for my networks and not completely buried in the other programs you're in. But nothing stops you from doing that. Uh, on the last slide, there was another company, Open Cities, that entered a program along with my on this slide, uh, called the City Innovates Startup and Residence Program. Just one example of a great GovTech incubator, expedites procurement between tech companies and, and municipalities, does that in a non-diluting way. We have a great relationship with them and so many other programs like the Alchemist Accelerator, iCyber Center, um, just uh, so many programs. We're gonna build a partner network and really illustrate all the different fast track relationships we have, but um, it's great to connect people into some of these, some of these different platforms. Um, several companies have established an ongoing office. Most recently, uh, Amplify, um, a strategic execution management platform from Adelaide, now has a lasting US base and some big sales from, uh, from our program. Companies like Video My Job in a previous cohort from Melbourne. Anyone know Video My Job? Yeah, so. Kristen and, and David and Dave, they're a super fantastic team. We now bought their product too, so I don't know if we can count an outcome of us uh, government buying them um, or using their tech, but uh, a, a product that allows recruiters to bring a job ad to life. So now your Seek ad has video um, uh, that actually shows what a day in the life is like of that company. Super easy branded templates, just point and shoot. Um, and, and, and have that kind of sleek video. It can be used in a lot of the use cases outside of just jobs, but um, everywhere they went, they would always bring t-shirts with every conference with just empty lines to sign up. And after the conference, it just show how many enterprises had signed up for contracts. Um, and then we're all about the bigger strategic uh, linkages, so video my job, sign a massive white label deal with Monster, not the energy drink, but um, it's our, one of our massive Seek equivalents, like Indeed and Monster, massive job site. Monster Studios was born through video on my job, uh, and, and, and they're rolling that out in a major way right now. But so many deep tech companies as well, uh, and I could, I could talk about successes forever, but like Liquid Instruments is a company that's an ANU spin out. After our program, they raised their Series A of, I think about 10 million US. They have 
this thing called Moku Lab that looks like a, I keep saying it looks like a Roomba, but it has about 20 and, 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 and growing different electrical measuring equipment, um, electrical measuring testing things, so like oscillators and got a bunch of other things that, uh, that are too esoteric for me to fully understand, but it's, it's transformed massive decades of, of legacy uh, of legacy equipment and turned labs into Roombas, uh, essentially, and their software allows them to continue to push um, new testing, new testing um, methods all the time to this device. So that and a bunch of cybersecurity companies and others. You go on, keep going, I think. So actually, this is how disorganized I am, but I had another slide deck. Testing, testing. Okay, so the mind is working. I saw some case studies on the Australian side as well. Australia.gov.au yeah. uh, yeah. forward slash landing pads, and then you can go into I think the news step. Yeah, and there are case studies. Yeah. Bit.ly bit slash landing pads as well. You can get into the case studies. Another one that I need to mention is Unleash Live. Uh, in our last cohort, uh, is doing AI. Um, they're just digesting a massive amount of video uh, and, and using that for, for a variety of purposes. And they can take that video from drones, from traffic cameras, uh, they can do yeah, disaster relief, like the California wildfires, all the way down to pedestrian crossing optimization in Sacramento. We connected them with those projects. Uh, they raised a seed round or five million before they came to the US and They've been killing it over there, so really good case study. And, and their case study talks really well about how they felt like the landing pad fit in to to that trajectory. So just about how to get into this this uh, this party that I've been talking about for for a while. Um, on the website, we have the application. It's super simple application. Um, we're looking basically at five criteria: vision, traction, scalability, differentiation, market relevance. A pitch deck. If you don't have that, you're probably not ready for the U.S. in general. Um, and, and then some info about your team. Um, but to break that down, because some of those are a bit nebulous, we just want the company to prove that they are unique, mature, and ready for the market that they've selected. Um, and as I said before, it's a market that they are ready to go to, independent of the landing pad. Um, we don't want to force someone. We can be a kick in the pants for someone who's getting ready, but we don't want to prematurely force a company over. Um, it's assessed offshore by, by our, our network in the Americas, then by an assessment panel onshore, and then we, we slot the company in. It's not a rolling program, but as I mentioned before, we really want, we're working with startups, and we're not going to fit people into a specific box. So we have defined cohort dates. Our next application deadline, at least right now, is the 20th. Um, 20th of this month? 20th of this month. I might, I don't know if we're going to have any room on that, but we're not. For now. So anyway, um, that's for a cohort that starts beginning of September. But we understand that companies might need to arrive early, might need to leave late if there's still space. We want to work with companies to make it to make it work. That first month of the program is when we try to concentrate um, the majority of our programming, so it's pretty important. But we have hot desk space. We have hot programming. We'll do ad hoc support in a general way wherever we can. Um, and not just in San Francisco, we really want to open up the experience in other markets. So I was talking to, uh, to MYGO about Denver earlier, our relationships in Houston and Austin and New York and Philly and Boston, uh, and, and now uh, Phoenix as well, and, and, and all over the US and America, it's Bogota, Medellin, um, they keep shipping me around. So, you know, for example, a company in our next cohort is spending a month with us starting on Monday in SF. Beginner tip, say SF, not San Fran, we're really pretentious over there, so instant credibility if you say SF, or San Francisco instead of San Fran. Um, but they're starting the first month with us in SF, and then we're helping them connect to a partner program in Houston uh, for the second two months of the program. So essentially, apply, you need to be vetted, and we need to understand and see that you're a company that's ready for our deeper impact services through the landing pad. But then work with us on where you need to be and when you need to be, when you need to be there, and we'll do our best to see what we can accommodate that. How many sites do you do? So we run three cohorts a year in San Francisco of 10 companies per. Um, we're about to start our 10th cohort, but I'll be honest, I mean, we've learned as we've gone. Um, 
and we've seen the ability to serve many more than 10 companies at a given time, given a flexible model that, 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 we're, that we're speaking to. So officially, I'd say we have 30, you know, 30 companies that we would serve in the program, but as we see companies travel, as we see them spending shorter periods of time in market, potentially longer periods, and as I get inundated with companies that are really fantastic and might be, might be ready for a, a lighter level of services, we're serving hundreds a year. And that's just yeah, so in total about 230 companies have gone through the quite close. About 230 companies so far through the program over two years. And that's through, I'll just say, that's through our signature offering, um, meaning that they went through our assessment panel, they went through those normal channels, 230. Yeah. Um, but it just like, I feel like morning tonight, the, the Qantas light lands and there's a bus that comes to the landing pad, it seems like, because uh, I'm talking to so many founders. Um, and helping them in, in, in different ways. Yeah, so we have boot camps as well, and shorter versions, often more discovery. So like I said, we're a bit earlier, not quite ready to go and maybe be based in the US long term. There are also some shorter options that we run throughout the year, sometimes sector focus. We had one recently that was ad tech to Tel Aviv. There's a med tech one to Shanghai, I think, in July. So there are things like that as well. And we're about to do this uh, a dual application defense program. We've done two cybersecurity Specific cohort in San Francisco. We did a space industries boot camp um, for new space companies. We're about to do a defense program uh, over the summer. I would say talk to me if you have a, about your specific sector focus today or over email, because we do trade missions that become much more packing the lunch for you, concentrated boot camps. Um, and then those can lead way to the industry agnostic programs, or as I just mentioned, these increasing number of thematic programs that we're building uh, around defense uh, and not inside and all these others. Any, any other questions? I've got a bunch of them. Yeah, uh, in the stage of the company, you offer the ability to spend maybe a couple of weeks in this area and then maybe, you know, Shanghai for a couple of years. You know, can you tailor that experience to a degree? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we are trying more flexible. We realize that, as Gabe said, 90 days in one location isn't always the right fit for every company. So we are looking to be, uh, have, I guess, more open uh, options. So as Gabe mentioned, uh, maybe like, you know, you might go to SF for a month and then realize actually Houston's running to be or wherever it is, we can then sort of help support as much as we can with our locations around the world. There is some flexibility in that, absolutely. Yeah, and all I'd add is we definitely want to be flexible. Um, in that tailored way, we want to work with companies that are, you know, have a very strategic plan. So what I'd say is from an exploratory stage, it's great to travel to test other markets. For a company that I'm serving in San Francisco, if they feel like we want to spend a week here and a week in Shanghai, I don't think they're at a point where they exactly know where their next market penetration focus is for the full program. Yeah, so you might benefit more then because of our more onshore support. So we do a lot of work with partners onshore to help you prepare to go into market. Uh, so we run uh, workshops around market intensives, go to market planning, uh, thinking about operation and how to expand, even found the problems like how to balance work between multiple time zones, things like that. So, what sort of advice can you, yeah, John? Um, what sort of advice can you provide for businesses that know they're vertical but want to make sure that they're culturally getting themselves in the right location when they step overseas? So, for example, uh, working in the US might have a very different attitude towards a particular product as opposed to China or Argentina or somewhere else. So, can you help us provide that sort of targeted information about what countries do attack first? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, the U.S. is so massive that often uh, there's so much relevant in so many verticals, not all in San Francisco, um, but obviously Midwest for ag tech, uh, Detroit for automotive, med tech in Boston, and, um, and, and Houston, and uh, ed tech and, and defense, and you know, everything is covered. I think it is know your market. Um, so a, a few things. I mean, know who you're trying to speak to. So they always say be near your customers or, or Near your investors, and know if that's you're working in media or fashion tech, and that's not San Francisco, and you need to be in New York and have that focus. Um, you know, for example, automotive. Obviously, there's huge opportunities in Berlin and Europe. 
well, also opportunities in, in, in the U.S., of course, um, and, and similar with, with impact and ad tech and everything. A piece of advice and kind of anecdotal feedback that we get from companies is that to compete in the Australian market, they, they often have technologies that are applicable on a wide variety of verticals. In the U.S., they really find they need to say, we're the master of this one, we killed it here. You know, we sell an encryption company that says we, we can and have encrypted everything from military to, 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 to financials to hospitality. Um, but they came into the U.S. and said, we need to be the encryption solution in health. Uh, and we need to just own ourselves and, and, and know that this is, our, this is our, our space to be. When you are looking at the market, it's great to do that intelligence back time and looking at Kathleen. But also, I just would, would say, before you're ready to really plan to buy in our market and start on hemorrhage of the money we need to pay to do this, um, it's good to be having these scoping trips and it's good to be having early interest from customers, maybe from investors, so you're not flying blind and you know that there's early seeds of conversations that can that can sprout while you're there. I'll also add, we have trade advisors in every capital city around Australia that are in different sectors. So like they said, we're not quite sure which area we're going to. We have advisors in, in cyber, in AI, FinTech, AdTech, MedTech, about seven different sectors. So often it's which one I go to them first at that kind of early stage advice. Once you've chosen like, yes, America is where I want to go, and that's probably then where you might look at someone like Gay. But until then, probably on shore can give you better support to help you get into those uh, early trade missions that Gabe mentioned. Exactly, those trade missions and other programs like tested. The other thing I need to say is um, export market development grants when the timing's right. I don't know if people are familiar, but as I said, we don't uh, charge for our program, we don't dilute companies, but we're not giving money for it. So as you scope out the market, as you do things like the landing pad, the export market development grants in Austria is one um, funding channel. Yeah, that, that was a question that I had about ENDGs. Yeah. That's where you could claim some of your travel expenses and things like that. Could you talk sure. a bit about that? Because yeah. this program doesn't cover travel and immigration and expenses. And right? to that degree, it's a bit self-selecting for the companies that are ready to do it. But EMDG, uh, we can connect you to the people who live and breathe this in Austria. Um, but broadly, what it's there to do is, is cover the cost of exporting business, which is really broad. It's, it's kind of everything, I, not everything, but it doesn't apply to developing a product or to raising investment, um, but uh, to, ent to enter a market. So that's, we're talking travel, uh, airfares, attending conferences, registering IP, hiring local staff, um, uh, even building a new website that is positioning your product for a different tax port into one of these markets. It's quite convoluted, unfortunately, to apply, but you can claim it for up to seven years in a row, uh, and then you're done. The first year, you can pull together two financial years. You need to have a minimum 15K spend in the financial year. The first 5K are on you, and then it's got its 50 50 matching after that. People can receive significant amounts of money. So many narratives of companies uh, in our program doing our tax incentive to develop the product, EMDG to export it from the landing pad to in that base in the market. Uh, but we have advisors, and you know, I'll be completely honest, often you're working with consulting firms to get through really the nitty gritty and nuances of how to apply and claim EMDG. Okay, uh, I've got a few questions sent to me. There was a question from Jeff here, but they want me to ask the hard questions. <laughs> so it is about, as you know, we are going to a general election, 18th of May. So the question was, what will happen to the landing pads? Will it still be there if the government changes? Will it crash land? Or what? I don't know whether you can answer, but... No, it's a global leak. Global leak happens. Thanks, Gabe. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, this is funded under NISA, um, National Innovation and Science Agenda. And it was funded for four years, so we're two years to a four year funding. So uh, while we can't comment on, on policy of uh, governments, if we can change governments, we can say that it's been funded for four years, so it may look different, but we are always looking to support startups going forward. So always, uh, I hope, it's something that will support that. Yeah. Thanks, I think that's somewhere all the Silicon teachers together, we have nearly 20,000. We can lobby the government not to, not to change it. Maybe change the name, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, um, fire me, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, what's into that? You have answered. You answered a lot of the questions that I had. So good job, kids. Uh, who can apply? So basically, uh, that information is actually in the Austrian website. Is it austrian.gov.au forward slash landing page? And there's FAQs. There's FAQs. I mean, huge for me is like I'm not trying to give propaganda here. We have so many alumni through our program, and they're super charitable about talking about their experience, what worked and what didn't. We, we develop and inform our program based on that feedback. And uh, if any of you go to that and say, we really like to talk to this, this company, uh, I can definitely look into making an intro. Um, and then similarly with Aussie Founders, AussieFounders.org, they have just this massive base of, of expats who can talk about their experience, even if it's not through our program directly, if it's just entering uh, the Americas. One question I was asked before we started was, uh, you know, because it's online now, we're digital, why do you need to go to a location? Uh, and I liken it to online dating, that shows my age. <laughs> but, you know, you can go online, you can see someone, you can swipe, you can do whatever. But actually going to a location like Gabe's saying, meeting people, putting faces to names, being on the ground, connecting into those great networks like AFN or the Australian community, is a really great way to actually sort of, I guess, get your brand out there and uh, show, I guess, who you are as a founder and your passion and your skill set. And it's really, I guess, also seeing it on the ground there, much different to, you know, just talking to someone as well. And just having the cohort. I mean, our program works best when that room is full of Aussies uh, and our, our 10 person office and we work in general. Uh, and so many of our alumni, we work should celebrate this, then end up staying in our we work anyway and, and benefiting from the accent. So, there's really nothing quite in parallel to the um, to having that cohort base. There's another few bits of feedback I've received from the companies through the program. Um, one is, at, um, maybe I'm just modest, but in the US, the badge of government and the badge of the Australian government is actually surprisingly strong. I mean, Americans love Aussies. Um, and there's quite a bit of novelty and excitement to having the companies through our program be some of the top selected Australian companies. Um, so, you know, we serve a wide variety of companies and our, our um, ambitious entrepreneurs will often put their best foot forward and say, I was selected as part of the, you know, one of the top Aussies in the US by my government, I'm here. That's open doors and wherever we can use that, we're very pleased to do it. Uh, another random piece of feedback from companies through our program is just the element of FOMO actually uh, by being over. So we've heard a lot of companies where you know, we haven't been able to record an export sale uh, in our CRM in the US, but they said that their their Australian business and maybe their Australian investors went nuts when they said, you've come over and now you've set up a US office. And there's a lot of value in that. So don't rush it overseas. Have a product that's ready in the US market, but you know, understand the value of, of that progress back in Australia as well. Thanks, Kip. Uh, there's another question. Can I apply for a specific location? Because some people, they say they want to go to Asia, to America, so can they, I think it's a question for you, can you choose? Yeah, sure, I mean, uh, we generally ask preferences, so generally we uh, have two preferences of location. Um, we'll talk to as well during the, uh, you know, the process and application. So if you say that, you know, we need to go to this location for this reason, yeah, thanks. Uh, and then it was my point before about make sure you're strategic about selecting your market, but absolutely we've had companies that have done one landing pad, killed it in that market, and then have applied again in the future for another landing pad. They're very much like Pokemon, you can fight them all. <laughs> and also there's a question, we have a team of three. And uh, is it only for one person, or could one person go for one month and another person for the next month? Can that be done? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so our resource constraint is is office space. Uh, I mean, we're happy to generally for all of our programs and sessions include more members of the team, uh, and more founders in the community. Obviously, tailored services if we're just seeing a, a few more names on an intro to to a VC, that's fine. For we work space, they've been quite flexible, and as I kind of alluded to, we're looking at expanding that relationship. Right now, we have one membership per team. The way companies have done this is 
Either they'll tag team, it's super easy to change the name of your web in the work system at any minute. It's also really easy to bring in other members of your team as guests. Um, so if you have some overlap with a second team member, really easy to add them as a guest into the system. Not hard to purchase an additional membership. Um, but what we often find with the teams is yes, they might bring one other person, but US is quite expensive market and this is them kind of establishing their beachhead base. So often they don't want to pay rent and food for a second member in that earliest time. Um, and, and then later on they might look to establish the office. So, you know, just uh, there's different ways to make it work, but obviously think strategically about who on your team do you need. You might not need your, your tech lead there, but you might very much need your CEO and CEO and market at the same time. Yeah, we have covered all the questions. Another question is about how can we talk to startups that have been through the program? I think that's on the website as well. You have an alumni network. Yeah, we have our whole alumni portfolio, so I was saying. Look through that base of alumni up there, and also go to the Aussie Founders uh, Network, AussieFounders.org, and have a much wider population of people. We also um, start running events here as well, there are alumni events. Um, we should did one yesterday with a uh, company, so stay tuned for those. That's great. Yeah. Talk about our founders. We have a clear question. Just to ask, how do we register for those sorts of events? I've read that and now I'd love to know about those sorts of events. For the events here or in market or in, in the US? Not local, to be fair. Yeah, sure. So uh, we, we do it through Eventbrite and through partners. Um, we also will have uh, an event page, I think, very shortly, so they get much easier for you to go on there and also see them. You can sign up to the email as well. You'll get regular updates on things like upcoming applications, alumni stories, events, all that kind of stuff. I'm sure there's a newsletter that people can subscribe to. Yes, they can. Let's do that. Um, yeah, uh, about Aussie Founders Network, it was founded by the same person who founded Silicon Beach, Elia Designing. So he lives in San Francisco. I had a 45 minute Zoom uh, conversation last week with him. So, and I basically invited him to come on the board of directors of Silicon Beach Australia. It's a company that, not a profit company, we are forming next financial year. So I'm sure we've been working very closely with Australia. And, uh, Pad, and also another organization that we are connecting with is advanced.org. Yeah. You should check out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a community of Aussies, overseas, expats overseas. And not just founders, but people on all stages of business. Yeah. yeah. And, and AFN and, and Advance, absolutely, and others, they have really strong presences in other cities as well. So, you know, we have the full Australia office, as I said, in these other places like New York, but I spent a month in New York in November. Um, feel free to reach out if you say, how do I connect to expats over there, let alone, of course, business connections. Over here. Yeah. I think there's a lot of scope for Aussies. Uh, I, I recently came across uh, someone posted on our Slack channel. Those of you who are not familiar with our Slack channel, please join. It's uh, slack.siliconbeach.community. Go to that page and you can put your email address in and you'll be in our Slack channel. Someone posted a, a startup survey or some sort of uh, data collection uh, agency called Startup Link. I haven't heard of Startup Link. It's a new one. It's they, they have done a great thing. They have, because everywhere there's Startup Genome and all these people who, who sort of rank startup cities, they all do it by cities. And generally Australian cities have fallen off the radar a bit. Uh, Sydney was number 17, Melbourne was 20 a few years ago. But now both those cities have fallen off because other cities have come up. But the startup link has started ranking entire countries. And I was uh, really happy to see Australia, which was number 11 or 12 in 2017. 2019 is has jumped to number five. So I don't know how that happened, but it's good. Maybe because of the landing pads and Silicon Beach, who knows? So it's US is up here somewhere, I don't know how they keep the points. And then we know that number two is the UK, and UK, Canada, Israel, and Australia, they're all in a bunch pretty close together. So if we all work together, government and industry and 
universities and startup communities, there is no reason why we can't push Australia to be the second largest startup nation in the world. So that's something we should aim for. Yeah, think first, not you as a. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think on that note, any other questions? There's not. I just have to say bit.ly slash landing pads one more time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Bit.ly slash landing pads. Well, no. Is that a different site to Australia.gov? Okay. Same one, just call out the town. Okay. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone, and thanks especially. Can you put your hands together for Catherine and you? mainly on US, but we will have further events. I've decided after getting the feedback this morning that the next three events in winter would be evening. I think NYOD is also very happy to be that piece of news. Because we, we especially uh, schedule these in the morning so that we could cross to North America through Zoom, but the technology is not quite there yet. We did some experiments with the sound, it's not perfect. so. To give us a bit of time to get that set up, we will be having the next three events, the June, July and the August events on the second Thursday of the month, same place, but in the evening. So keep an eye out on that. It could be, it could be some interesting topics we haven't uh, thought about it yet. Thank you for coming and thank you for watching all the people on YouTube. Any last words? Yeah, I don't know if we have a right now, but it's not. Yeah, we'll share the information, the links and everything. There's more coffee. I think uh, Australia, your, your tax money has paid for the coffee and the breakfast, so don't go away without... You can't sell them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Order two or three coffees before you go. So <laughs> <you can start. laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>